Okay, so, so basically, uh, it looks like I've been into two videos. I, I, I got interrupted. I didn't know how to pause it. Oh, and now I know how to pause it. <laughs> oh, okay, um, uh, uh, where was I? Uh, basically, um, the whole notion of Africa being the cradle of civilization is false. Africa cannot be because Africa was mainly, especially North Africa, was underwater. North Africa has every single, uh, they found a fossil, every single sea creature in the Sahara. Uh, according to Dr. Delbert Blair and others, um, back in the ancient times when we, we had these, these you know, nuclear weapons and stuff that we, we destroyed the economy and all these deserts, especially the Sahara was, was, was due to that, uh, these ancient wars that our people fought against each other. Even the Nation of Islam talk about the uh, the scientists called Shabazz that had put the, the uh, explosives in the earth and, and blew the earth, you know, in half, and, and the other half ended up being the moon, you know. And of course, Allah knows best. Allah says in the Quran, He swears by the moon and He swears by the sun. All right, these are the process of creation of Allah, so that's especially the stars. And speaking about the stars, I said that's where, where we originate from the stars in the ether. You know, they even call it dark matter. They said, what is dark matter? Melanin. You know, we manifest melanin on, on this planet. Melanin is a melanated planet. This, the soil is dark. So it's a melanated planet. Um, basically, so you have, um, so, so, you know, we're dealing in terms of Africa, and Africa was only called Africa in 1554. You know, there was, there was a map of Africa that was, um, I, don't, I don't have it in front of me. It's on, it's on my video. Uh, the person that, that produced this map and for the first time named, named the continent Africa, the entire continent. Okay. Now, in terms of, of, of Hebrew, Hebrew is a word uh, that means, literally means those who crossed over. You know, I understand the Hebrew is like brothers and sisters, you know, you're thinking everything originated with the Hebrew, it did not. Just like things in the region of Africa, there are civilizations far older than African civilizations. So it didn't originate in Africa. You know, Hebrew is not, not an original uh, word or, or, or concept either. It's not the oldest, it's not, it's not an old religion. I mean, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a religion, nor is Hebrew a nation. There's no nation called Hebrew. I say Hebrew is a condition. Hebrew is a condition of people, the people who crossed over. These people were, were crossed over, and these people were called um, Haribu, which was then corrupted to Hebrew. It means those who crossed over. So Hebrew is a condition of people who migrated from one area to another area. You know, and in Hebrew, it, it also means a wanderer or a foreigner. That's what Hebrew means. You know, we, we talk about the Hebrew Israelite culture and stuff, but Hebrew was what they called, you know, Ibrahim, alayhi salam, or Abraham and his followers when they crossed over to get into uh, what we call today Palestine. Then it was it's, it's people by people called the Canaanites, or, or you know, it was called Canaan. Canaan is a um, he's a Hamite. He's his father was Ham. You know, Ibrahim and his father was Semites. You know, their their, their forefather was Sham, Ham's brother. So Hebrew Israelite. It's a, it's, 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 it, it, you know, somebody could be a Hebrew, not exactly be a Hebrew Israelite, because Israelite came from Jacob. All right, now Jacob is the grandson of Ibrahim. Jacob's father was Ishak or Isaac. Now Jacob, what we call Yaqub, in the Quran, um, in Arabic. You know, peace be on to all of them. Had 12 sons. His, his name was changed to, you know, um, 
we see Yaqub, uh, Yaqub is Jacob. His name was changed to Israel. And I think somebody means, I think it means something, guardian of the law or something. Um, Israel in the Arabic. So Israel, Israel had 12 sons. That's why they call the children of Israel. Israel, they migrated into Egypt after Yusef, you know, was sold, his brother sold him into slavery and took him, you know, and, and his, the people that they sold, that uh, did, sold to pick them up from the well and told him slavery was, you know, took him to Egypt. And, you know, eventually, long story, I mean, long story short, he, you know, Yusef became second in charge of Egypt. So after that, after that episode, it's in the 12th chapter of the Quran. It's also a biblical account. Um, after that, then they came. They came into Egypt, but these people, you know, they they were indistinguishable from the Egyptians. That's why Musa was raised by by the enemy of the, of, of the Hebrews. You know, the Bible says the Hebrews were binding Israel. The Quran does not say Hebrew. The word Hebrew is not in the Quran, period. Quran refers to them as Bani Israel or the children of Israel. That's dealing with lineage. The Quran teaches in terms of lineage from from from, from Ibrahim uh, Abraham through his sons. It teaches in, in, in his in his offspring. It teaches in terms of lineage. So we have um, in the Quran. I said it, it deals with um, Bani Israel, the story of Bani Israel and Pharaoh and Bani Israel in the wilderness is the most mentioned story in the Quran. It is the most mentioned story in the Quran. What Allah refers to it as is Hadithu Musa. And I did a cookbook on that, Hadithu Musa, or the story of Musa. And the story of Musa has is in three parts. When he was put in the the the, the, the box or the container or the chest and sent up the river. And ended up in Pharaoh's uh, garden, you know, and that's one part. The next part is when he, you know, he was raised up in Pharaoh, and according to the biblical account, he knew everything. He learned all of the information, uh, you know, Pharaonic uh, of, of, of information, and then he killed the man accidentally. Trying to defend one of his people, Abani Israel. And then he had fled. And then he fled to Madian, which is in modern day Saudi Arabia. So there he, be, he became a messenger of a law, a prophet and messenger of a law. He got married, his family, he's an indentured servant to his father in law, I believe, for 10 years. He married uh, his daughter, you know, of course, you know, he married his, his daughter. It's his father-in-law, um, they, they, I think they call him in the Bible Jethro. We call him Shuaib in the Quran. So he was able to, um, you know, he was missing to come back to Pharaoh, him and his brother, Harun, go to Pharaoh and spread the message in, in terms of Pharaoh. So we get into the uh, comedic because the comedic history is, is in the Quran. That's 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 involves comedic history. We dealing with Pharaoh. Now Ibrahim, it says in the in the Bible, uh, you know that Ibrahim alayhi salam. That when I say alayhi salam, it means peace be on to you, peace be on to them, or him. All right. And with the Prophet Muhammad, we'll say Allah alayhi wa salam with the blessing and peace of Allah be upon him. 
because that, that, that instructions in the Quran to do so. Um, when he even went to Pharaoh, uh, I mean, I mean, even he went into Egypt. The Quran says, so the king of Egypt, it was before the Pharaonic period. You know, the Bible says Pharaoh, uh, the, the Bible is simply wrong. There's, there was no Pharaoh back there at the time of Ibrahim. He went to Ibrahim and he went to, to Pharaoh, and that's where he got Hagar. And we will get into that a little bit later. Um, in terms of uh, Musa, we, we, we're jumping ahead. <laughs> in terms of Musa, uh, Musa went back to Pharaoh. Musa, uh, you know, to Israel, left with Musa. Uh, Pharaoh pursued them because he took. They took the wealth of Pharaoh. They took. They took. They took all. Yeah, the Bible describes it very, very aptly. That they took the wealth and everything of Pharaoh. So Pharaoh pursued them. And uh, you know, got to the Red Sea. And some people believe, oh, that didn't happen. It's a story. I said, but uh, a, a man named by the name of Robert Wyatt. Uh, that was a. Uh, you know, you have these archaeologists that, that, that uh, you know, discover the truth and they, they, they produce the truth on their own, right? They, they get it out there. They're, they're not, they're, they're independent archaeologists. They're not assigned to, uh, or, or, um, you know, uh, alive with any type of, of these institutions, you know, that, 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 that always, you know, try to keep us uh, colonized. So what he did was um, he found, it was a gopher, Akaba, the Gulf of Akaba, is the eastern part branch of the of the Red Sea, on the eastern side of the Sinai between um, the Sinai and Saudi Arabia, and found out they, they there's a land bridge there. Just underneath the, the 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 water, there's a land bridge. They crossed that land bridge, and then they ended up in Saudi Arabia. The mount the actual Mount Sinai is in Saudi Arabia. Show the pictures of the of the mountain, the mountain that was burnt, everything like that, you know. And I know that there's some people who believe that all of this stuff happened here. Um, I'm I'm still looking into that. Uh, I don't I don't discount it, um, but you know, uh, I, 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 there's some evidences that talk about some of the the uh, the features in terms of the biblical features in terms of the uh, landmarks. That these people are not uh, in the middle. In, in, there in the Middle East, it's, 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 it doesn't even come close. And here in America, it's, it's, it's more defined. I think Mount Pisan was one, and it was a mountain here, and it's and it's not. You know, it's the same. It's the same names. Um, but that's. I mean, you can go to um, you know some other people on that one. Um, I haven't gone delve into that one. But the, but the thing that I'm seeing today. Um, in terms of Musa um, and the, so the, to the third part of Musa's story was with children, with children of Israel uh, children of Israel still had their pharaonic ways and when Musa went to get you know what would come to be the Ten Commandments uh, and left for 40 days um, you know they rebelled they, they took um, the golden calf and decided to worship the golden calf. Why did he take the golden calf? Because in Egypt, the bull represented, during that time, the bull represented the, the power of the creator. That's represented by the bull at that time. Now, I don't know if this correlates with, with the age of Taurus or, or something, but they, but nevertheless, they, 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 the bull represented the power of the creator. So they made a calf out of gold. The gold that they took from <laughs> from Pharaoh, they made a calf out of it. You know, they were still things. So that so they were they they were made to wander in the wilderness for forty years. They couldn't go to the promised land, and Musa in the land didn't see the promised land. Okay. So that's where you get to where now the the Hebrew language is actually the Phoenician language. Right, it's from these language, and it was developing in Kemet. So all that stuff in terms of of Hamic, Kemetic, you know, all, all that stuff and, and languages and stuff. I, from my understanding, 
uh, it came out in the, 18, in, the, in the 1800s, in the 19th century. There was a lot of things that came out that we think that are uh, of, of all this, this, this knowledge of ancient knowledge or whatever, uh, where they it's all about the Greeks being like like the, um, the first um, uh, quote unquote white civilization and so forth and so forth, quote unquote, came out in the mid 19th century. All of that stuff. We it, and, and, and even Bobby Hemmett covered this. He said that the Greek statues you see them, they're brand new. They're not, their nose is not busted up or nothing like that. Because they were they were made in the eighteen middle of the of the of the eighteen hundreds. That's why. And then we thinking, oh well, this is something. The, the, the whole notion of race came out in the eighteenth century. Like 1750, uh, 1750s, I think 1735, 1750, you had um, Carol Van Lynn. Carol Van Lynn made a, um, his, he used the, uh, because the Linger Frank of the day was, you know, for the, for the elite or the educated was Latin. So he Latinized his name to Carolus Linnaeus. Now this man wrote a book. Um, I, I, I know that there's a, a, a copy that um, I had access to was in 1758. That he then made all of the racial uh, classification, and he was not an anthropologist. He was a botanist. So him being a botanist and a zoologist. I see he made a man into kind of like an animal and basically classified bed in terms of animal in terms of species and saying your your um, your penis right was this was this was a species of man and then he gave good quality to the Europeans he said America's um, and he and said they were red. Um, you know, that's where you get the the, 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 the myth of the red Indian about. Um, all about Americans were red. And he he didn't he didn't really give them much flattering uh, thing. I don't I don't have the book in front of me. Matter of fact, um let me go ahead. Excuse me one second. Mm -hmm. Can you see this? My new book, To Be a Muslim Anymore, A Journey into Our True Heritage. Is there a Morris Awakening book? There you go, right there. All right, the book he made was Systema Naturae. This is what he said: Species Americanus, red, caloric, bad tempered, straight. Governed by traditional practices. He said, Europeanus, white, seguin, cheerful, muscular, governed by religion. Asiaticus, sallow, melanic, sad, stiff. In his first edition, he said they were brown. In the second edition, I guess sallow means yellow. Governed by opinion. Africanus, black. Plagmatic, unemotional, lazy, governed by choice. Now this this man also made the term Homo sapien. So he made the term Homo sapien. He reduced man to just a mere animal. 
and then gave everybody else, they mean the white Europeans, the red Americans, the yellow Asians, and the black Africans. That's when that was associated, all those colors were associated with this thing, and that's not true at all. Right? What he said was false. Because Moors were everywhere. Every single place Moors were. We were, all, we were everywhere. You know, every inch of the land, and like I said, there were there were Caucasian people in Africa, in places you would, you would think, for thousands of years. They were the so-called, um, I guess the so-called Red Americans that ended up in Europe as well, you know, all over the place. And there was, um, you know, people whom we call Oriental Times as, you know, or, or um, you know, Oriental Far Eastern people. I mean, th th that type was all over the place. You know, so-called Mongoloid was all over the place. You know, now people in, in, in before, prior to Columbus, before the European invasion, before all that, 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 that European, which you know, as Gog and Magog, they came out of Caucasus Mountains. They were Gog and Magog. You know, briefly they refer to as Gog and Magog. Before the Gog and Magog invention had taken over the world, these people, you know, you know, we we taught that all, all the other people were just, you know, sitting in place, waiting for the European, so-called European, you know, as Gog and Magog, to, to then uh, start training, you know, and and and, and bringing civilization to everybody. So we know that's false, because most of the first civilization, it was a worldwide civilization. Now the Wasatom Moors, which which I, I I did become a member of the Wasatom Moors just recently. You know, I know I, that I had um, said that I wasn't, you know, I was not affiliated with anybody because I don't want anybody to think that I, I was teaching indoctrination. I'm teaching research. This is research. But the people who was close closest to me um, was um, Dr. Ali El Bay. He has the United Wasatoa Moors. They built them on y'all, and um, I've, I've I've now joined him. Um, if you see his recent videos, you may hear my voice on the video in his class. Um, so basically. Um, you know, when you look at the standpoint of the Moor, the dark skinned person is a Moor, right? And any, everybody else is of Moorish descent because everybody came from us, all right? Every, all the people came from us. We weren't monkeys. You didn't, we didn't, we didn't have anything to do with the monkey. Monkeys even came from, <laughs> the monkeys even came from, from, from human beings. You know, and that's, that's, that's the whole other thing. So, again, my, my Moorish brothers and sisters, Moabites is not the original Moors. They were Moors before Moabites. The Moab, the Moors existed before Moab. Moab was a Moor, but Moors existed before Moab. How um, you know you you can't go you can't go to history. It started here, and 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 there was people well before that. You know, even people talk about Adam, you know, and even that they wasn't the first, really the first people. You know, in my in my in my in the Quran, it talks about Adam being the first man. You know, so I have my tendency of believing that that whoever was first. Every, which you know, Quran doesn't have this date or that date, you know. Um, but whoever was first, whoever came from the ether, whoever came from paradise, came from from paradise into into this this third dimension. The first people to do that was Adam and Eve. Regardless of what you believe, you know, the first man, first woman, we refer to as Adam and Eve, or Adam and Hawa, Hawa in Arabic. So Moroccan, so no, Moroccans are not, are not Moors. I mean, Moor, 
once you don't go back to Morocco. That's not the beginning either. But if you're talking about the Moabites traveling to um, into West Africa, sure. You know, people. I, I just described the people that came from Phoenicia, came from the Middle East. You know, Moab is where is where um, I, I believe where Jordan is. And they, they travel, yes. Yes, they travel from from the Middle East into West Africa. That's why I'm on more. <laughs> because I realized that. Alright? Because they travel from, from that. That's that's true. But we didn't start there. Alright? Morse came from Lemuria. Lemuria found out when I went to Hawaii. And that's where, that's where we originated from. The, the land was was kingdom known as Lemuria. Um, the only um, Colonel um, James Churchwood, he, he doesn't call it Lemuria. He just calls it uh, Mu, the land of Mu, or the motherland. Mu means mother. You know, so I say more is coming from the mother. Resty was associated with dark skinned people because dark skinned people were the Lemurians. Like one YouTuber said many, many years ago, he said Lemurians, he said, he said, you know, quote unquote black people are descended from the Lemurians. Okay. So there's, there's, um, um, you know, I, I, I'm not, you know, getting that. That's not the subject of the, of the, of the uh, uh, of this, um, this, this, this uh, discussion right now, but what I would like you to do, and I, 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 I want uh, and, and I, I'm sorry, I forgot to to talk to uh, subscribers to my channel. I have over a thousand subscribers. I, I want to thank every single person that subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate you. I'm trying to put some content out there. I said I, I'm, I'm a like I said I'm an information guy. I just give out information. Um, I'm, I'm not. I'm not here to entertain. I mean, you go on other stations. I think um, UBTV. He does things a lot. Of, uh, you know, he entertains a lot. He, he's got some of the same information. He entertains very, very much. Um, again, I, I, I love all of y'all. Um, and everybody has is, is going to have their point of view. It's kind of like. We are like, like look at it, that the is that the truth is in the middle, and everybody is around looking at the truth. Three hundred and sixty degrees, a circle, right? And according to the of Islam teachings, that three hundred and sixty degrees is the knowledge of God. You know, you gotta have total knowledge. You you can't you can't look at one aspect and say I got the truth. You know, you you can't do that. You know me. I, I've got a piece of it. I'm looking at. I'm looking at my aspect, but I'm also trying to look at other people's aspects. You know, I have. I have like. I think I have a book <laughs> for every subscriber on my channel right now, and it probably when I inshallah if I get to to two thousand, I'll probably have a book for every subscriber on the channel because my library continues to grow. But I have books not just on, you know, um, our heritage, or Moorish heritage, or Black heritage, or whatever you want to call it, or it's or just Islam. I said I have I have books on on, on, on a bunch of people's heritage, um, and I have books on um, I, have, I have several Bibles. I said a lot of, 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 about at least ten trans uh, ten um, versions of the Bible. I think I have I have at least thirteen Bibles. You know, some some of them have multiple uh, Bibles, multiple versions of the same Bible. I got that three King James versions. I got two the, the Catholic versions, the New American version. It's called the Catholic version. You know, um, I have several translations of Quran. I have several um, books of um, of Hadiths and. You know, I just gave a cookball today um, at the prison in terms of the of the, of the hadiths. 
Um, but those of you who know, I hope I'm not going a little straight for those of you who are not Muslims and, and don't understand the hadith is the, is the, uh, the recording of the, um, of, of the, of the words and action of the Prophet Muhammad and his companions. Um, and I gave a, 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 a talk on that, uh, Kubas, this is a Friday sermon, uh, and I gave a talk on that, and that dealt with um, that the word hadith is in the Quran, so to say Quran and hadith is incorrect, because the hadith is in the Quran, and then Allah uses the word hadith in a different context, you know, he calls the Quran the hadith, um, so if you want to really, um, my, I have a cut bar on that. I mean, go go to my cut bars. Um, I have uh, several of them. I share them on my Morris Awakening channel. All of them is on my um, This Is Muslim American More channel. So you can check it out. Please subscribe to that as well. Um, I I just need, um, you know, subscribe. Uh, I have a Patreon account. Um, yeah, no one's really busy today. But what I would like for you all to do is please give me some feedback on what I'm saying. I, I, I think everybody's probably getting my most, you know, my last video had some good reaction. I had immediate reaction. I really appreciate that. But, but you know, I leave the comments open. I said you could comment based upon um, what I'm saying, based upon what I'm teaching. Um, I've got a lot of comments in the past that, that was not near what I was teaching. You know, people just have straight comments out there. Um, I know some some other videos that I've uploaded from other channels have got, um, um, you know, comments, uh, some negative comments. Um, and then it was a, a, a group of um, Hungarian or, or a group or <laughs> person that uh, was from, I believe, Hungary, Hungary, um, Hungary, sorry, um, that had, um, that, that was trying to teach over what I was teaching. And I was like, he said, more means, you know, whatever he said in Hungarian. And I'm like, I don't speak Hungarian. <laughs> Stop. That's, that I ain't got nothing to do with me. All right. Because, because, you know, I don't speak it and he has to, uh, uh video call the English doesn't exist or something like that you know um, but basically I, I want you all to, to feel free to comment comment on, on what you think I mean the only way I'm going to grow you know or be better is if, if I hear from you and what you think I, I have not done any um, live I'm, I'm still learning how to do a live so you know inshallah God willing that I would end up you know eventually doing a lot um, so I hope you you know understand the information if you don't look I, I have um, my newsletters on my blogs and it, it, it's the blogs um, podcasts um, I've, I've written anthologies you know newsletters all this information I'm talking about um, you know, is, is they're, they're, they're in my newsletters. Um, you know, I have other books on Amazon. Um, the books, if you want, if you want a copy of, of uh, this book, I have two books that I've, I've made up. For, if you want a copy of this book, right here. You know, I'm more awakening books, and. This book I put in book form. It is an ebook that's available on Kindle. It's Morris Awakening, the Islamic view of Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. Because um, after I wrote that book, I discovered that uh, there was a, a scholar, um, you know, an old scholar back uh, some centuries ago named Ibn Kathir. Um, have wrote a book called Islamic View of Jesus. Uh, just recently, somebody, um, one of the 
I think he's a I, he, he does a lot of things on Christianity that channel I, I, it's escapes me right now I'm sorry I had a Muslim view of Jesus I, I actually thought I was like wow wait a minute did he take my book but I, he might have he didn't research I'm, I'm pretty sure he researched that book um, it's an e-book but you can get it as a physical book all you gotta do is reach out to me Morris Awakening at gmail.com once you email me or you you know once you once you email me and you say and just put in the, in the subject matter book okay and then and then let me know which book that you want do you want um, you know the Islamic view of Jesus or do you want to be a more a Muslim a journey into our true heritage you get either one or both okay I'm telling them I'm, I'm letting them go uh, if you if you if you are paying they're about $17 a piece I mean it, it, well, you know that's that's the price $17 a piece and I'm, I'm you know I, I think it's a fair price so I'm letting it go for that amount um, just reach out to me you get these books. The rest of my books are available on Amazon. So Amazon basically controls the price of those books. Um, but reach out to me, Moorish Awakening. It's the same thing as your Moorish Awakening at gmail.com. Also, you can text me at 252. Text now. 252-206-6731. Okay? Text me first so I, so I know that, that you're not a telemarketer. I don't know if people have been trying to call me or reaching out to me. Um, if they call, if you call, I may miss your call. Now, if if I missed your call, if you call me and I missed your call, please leave me a clear message. Somebody left me a message and it, and it was and it was kind of I heard Assalamu alaikum, and then and then it kind of was garbled. I think they said Assalamu alaikum Mustafa, and then it was garbled. I can't I can't understand what they were saying. I texted back and said, "Can you can you please text me and see and see if if, if that's going to be, um, you know, if you could if you could you know text me and and um, you know tell me what what message you sent me." I, I got no reply. You know, um, I'm not a hard person to reach. You know, I gave you my uh, my Gmail. If you want to put a comment down. Please put a comment down. Put some feedback. Let me know what you think. So again, um, I'm going to leave you um, with um, peace be upon you. And I hope everybody has a, a great pleasant day. I love you, family. Um, and I usually end up with the Islamic greeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.